What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel, welcome to another Pokemon video. So the other day I was driving my girlfriend home from visiting me, she was, you know, going back to the airport, uh, and the Pokemon Presents came on and I basically had to listen to it via the aux cord, I didn't get to look at anything, but now that I'm home, I've taken a look at all the news and I want to give my opinions on everything that we've seen. As always, if you guys enjoyed this video at any point in time, do me a favor, leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications because I bring you daily Pokemon content. Unfortunately, not last week, I was busy studying for a quantum mechanics test, but I have a lot more free time this week, so hopefully we'll be able to get back on the on the grind. But yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. Also, let me know which one of these you think you're going to be picking. So let's talk about these starters. Basically, Fue Coco. I love you. He's 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 friend shaped like, like and he's probably like a hot pepper. So uh, let's start with Sprigatito. So Sprigatito is a grass cat Pokemon, and I want to like I'm a I'm a competitive Pokemon YouTuber, right? Obviously, like I, I want to talk about what I want from typings and stuff, what I hope they're gonna evolve into, and like what new Pokemon we'll get to play with. Uh, but I also want to talk about what I think they're design will be in the end as as far as like you know what pokemon or what animal these pokemon are based around so if you don't know the grass types are typically extinct uh animals in the real world and you can see that with things like venusaur um septile like they're all like just extinct animals i forget what they're based off of but just you know go with it sprigatito being a cat uh, breaks the mold as typically we we like tend to see the grass types being reptiles and stuff since you know there were a lot of like dinosaurs that went extinct uh however being a cat i really really hope we get some kind of saber tooth tiger i hope it stays on all fours like i love you incineroar you're a great vgc pokemon but please i want this thing's feet just stapled to the ground to ensure that it stays quadrupedal because those quadrupedal pokemon are peak design i I'm hoping, I mean, like, it'd be cool if as, like, a Sabertooth Tiger it end up getting, like, Intimidate or something, uh, but I don't think that's the route they're gonna go. We already have a pretty strong Intimidating Cat Pokemon. Uh, being a cat also lends it to probably learning Fake Out, as a lot of cat-like Pokemon end up getting Fake Out. As you can see, uh, we have, like, Mian Xiao, Incineroar, uh, where are the rest? There's a lot of non-cats. Uh, Liopard... Persian, Berserker, you know, like there's there's a decent amount of cat-like Pokemon that get that. I'm hoping that it does. I think that, you know, the more fake-out Pokemon, the merrier. Uh, but I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, as far as Fue Coco goes, it is a crocodile Pokemon. And as far as the description is, you know, the laid-back fire croc Pokemon that does things at its own pace, it, it I'm concerned that it's going to be a slow fire type. And while slow fire types aren't inherently bad, uh, they don't really do as well as you think in competitive, mainly because, you know, fast water spout, fast muddy water, fast earthquake. These things are things that you always have to look out for. And if we just take a look at the slowest fire types, Torkoal and Colossal are an exception to this rule because they're just broken. Uh, Turtonator, yeah, I guess Marowak's fine. You know, maybe, maybe my point is kind of like nullified by the fact that they're actually a good amount of slow Pokemon, but I want it to be faster. However, I'm pretty certain it's not judging by the design. You know, it looks a little bit chunky and he's uh, described as being a little bit slow. So uh, what I'm hoping for is that this guy ends up being the best of the three. I hope he has like a major glow up. Uh, I really, really hope that as a crocodile Pokemon, I believe crocodiles are the ones that tend to stay on dry land. Alligators are the more water inclined animals uh but as a crocodile pokemon i'm hoping that it's gonna be part ground type sort of like crocodile was uh and if this thing's part ground type which is the assumption i'm gonna base the rest of this video off of uh we can actually sort of go into what i think the other things are gonna be considering the uh design what's it called like the patterns in like designing the starters in the previous generations as far as like their secondary typings so yeah uh quaxley i think is adorable i forgot what it's based off of. i think it's called like a crescent duck or something it's the same thing as Cresselia, uh but they look like they have little hats on their head and that's really cool these guys are typically like the water types typically have a weapon based motif uh take a look at blastoise uh which is you know like a tank um what was gen 2 why am i blanking on the gen 2 water type star for alligator i forget what that one was honestly i don't know what that was um gen 3 was swampert am i wrong about this 
hold on, give me a second. Yeah, excuse me using Reddit as my source, but as you can see, they tend to have some kind of like a weapon motif. You know, I guess the, the fire types have like the zodiac thing going on, the grass types have the extinct animal thing going on, and the water types tend to have like a weapon thing. I, I think for alligator being brass knuckles is a bit of a stretch, but the rest of this sort of lines up. Uh, I also forget what Primarinas is, but yeah, I mean, this guy's already got like a captain's hat on. I'd like to imagine that we might get some kind of a fighter pilot sort of deal. And if this thing ends up being like a fighter pilot, I think it's probably going to keep that uh, flying typing. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it doesn't have a flying typing right now, but it'd be really interesting if it did. I'm honestly hoping that they do a similar thing that they did with previous generations, where the secondary typings are hard counters to each other. Incineroar was, you know, Fire Dark, Decidueye was Grass Ghost, and Primarina was Water Fairy. Dark beats Ghost, Fairy beats Dark, <laughs> Ghost just kind of hangs out. Uh, Delphox, Chestnut, Greninja, uh, Psychic beats Fighting, Fighting beats Dark, Dark beats Psychic. Like, there's there's usually a bit of a cycle going on. They sort of broke it in Generation 8, as in Generation 8, they didn't have any secondary typings, and I think that'd be the least type thing they could do with these guys. I'm really hoping they're able to, you know, get something going. So, if I'm assuming that this thing's going to be, like, if not Fire Ground, maybe it'll end up being, like, Fire Dragon, and that sort of changes my prediction, but if this thing's ground and this thing ends up being like a saber tooth tiger i think it'd be interesting if this thing was like grass steel you know like really lean into the whole saber part of the saber tooth tiger making it like oh hey its teeth are like steel and if this thing is ground and this thing's steel and ground beats steel steel would need to beat something that beats ground what beats ground water and ice so it'd actually be kind of cool if this thing was half ice uh i don't know if i'd be the biggest fan of that but we'd have like the circle going on and that'd be kind of interesting Honestly, I, I think that <laughs> this thing's going to end up being the best competitive Pokemon if it ends up being Grass Steel. That's just a phenomenal typing historically. We have things like Ferrothorn, we have things like Kartana, uh, and Water Ice is never hype, uh, and Fire Ground is fine. We basically just have Camerupt and Primal Groudon, so it depends on the ability. It'd be really, really cool if this thing got something that made it like immune to water moves to make it just that much better as like a hidden ability. At being a crocodile, uh, it, these things tend to have dry skin, so being able to regain health from water moves would be really cool. It would still have good weaknesses uh, to make sure it's not like too broken. Obviously, you'd be able to hit it with ground type moves. Uh, you'd be able to hit it with, I guess, ice is neutral at that point, but just getting rid of that like times for weakness would help out quite a bit. Uh, as far as stats go, obviously we have no way of predicting these things, but I'm hoping that they, they, they gotta step it up as far as starter stats go. Starters tend to be carried by their abilities. Incineroar, its stats are pretty good, but being slow made it hard to use. It, in, it like 100% needed Intimidate to be good. I think the only person who ever made this thing good without Intimidate was Giovanni Costa in 2017, uh, where he used it on his EV team, and that was mainly just for U-turn fake out reasons. Uh, Decidueye, its ability was garbage. Primarina carried by its ability. Liquid Voice was absolutely important. If we go to Generation 8, let's go to Cinderace, uh, Rillaboom, and Inteleon. So, Cinderace, it was alright. It was always alright, just as like, you know, a, a fire type with decent coverage. Uh, but it became so much better with Libero, which uh, ended up making it change its uh, uh, change its typing to whatever move it used. So it basically, it's whatever type you needed to be getting stab on everything, which was busted. Uh, we have Rillaboom, who sets up Grassy Terrain and is able to use things like Grassy Glide, which was amazing and made it super, super competitively viable. And while Inteleon, I would argue, was the best of the three prior to them getting their abilities, it ended up becoming the worst in the end, uh, as Sniper doesn't do that much for it. It allows you to run like Scope Lens plus uh, Focus Energy Sets. Uh, with like snipe shot and stuff uh, but it really never found its footing again in competitive after uh, the other starters you know got their abilities because the power creep was just a lot more in their favor so yeah i'm hoping that they end up giving these things decent stats so that way they're not 100 percent relying on their abilities because there's no way of i don't know if this thing ends up having dry skin that'd be cool if this thing ends up having like strong jaw because you know saber tooth tiger that'd be kind of cool i want them to have novel abilities that aren't going to be outright broken but give them a little bit more identity to their design like it'd be really cool if well i mean you know i guess that this guy if he's like a fighter pilot maybe give it something like maybe like the opposite of bulletproof 
like chestnut has the ability bulletproof right so like you know projectile based moves don't deal any damage what if we had like the inverse of that where projectile based moves deal more damage sort of like mega launcher but for different moves you know so yeah uh, that's just an idea i had for this sort of thing uh moving past that i want to talk about just how great this game looks graphics wise i mean like obviously we're in 2022 uh, we have much better looking games, but as far as finding a balance between good looking graphics and still maintaining the art style of Pokemon, but moving it forward, uh, I think we've hit our stride here. I was always a big fan of the sun and moon art style. Uh, I liked that it took the generation six aesthetic and gave them more realistic proportions while still allowing things to look a little bit cartoony. I wasn't a big fan of Generation 8's art style uh, as they just didn't have any like it, it seemed very generic. It just seemed like yeah, this is kind of like a, a you know, a very cheap looking anime art style. We're here. I really like just how colorful this thing is like it's it's all very bright. It, it's you know, it's Spain, obviously. So, you know, there's a decent color palette going on. Uh, but I mean, it just looks good for pokemon pokemon legends arts case was kind of cool they sort of tried to go with like a an old like japanese painting aesthetic for it but uh i think that they you know taking obviously that engine you can tell by just the fact that it's it's you know they're not going to make a whole different engine for this game they're just going to upgrade the previous engine as they did with uh let's go pikachu turning into the sword and shield engine they did the same thing here most likely they turned the pokemon legends arceus engine into the pokemon uh, scarlet and violet engine and I think that they did pretty good. I mean, Pokemon Legends Arceus wasn't an open world game. It was more like Monster Hunter. It was semi open world. You went to open areas. It was like a bunch of giant wild areas, right? The fact that this entire game is being marketed as being just completely open world uh, is just insane. I don't know how they're going to get this game to load that well on the Switch. I guess, you know, The Legend of Zelda uh, Breath of the Wild did it, but it feels weird seeing Pokemon take this big of a leap as far as how their game is designed because if it is open world there are a couple of implications with that if you've played open world games there's a lot more freedom you can move from the first town usually all the way to the final town and while you might not be able to access like the final boss you can pretty much go anywhere on the map i think pokemon legends arceus allowed you to do something similar where you in like the first area, they're like low level Pokemon, but there are areas that you would need to backtrack to once you get further along in the game. So you could handle those fights like in the Obsidian Field Lens, you know, you can catch Starlies, you can catch Bidoofs and stuff or Weasels, and they're all around your level. But out in the distance, there's like a level 60 Alpha Snorlax. You don't want to mess with that. And also, once you like get the ability to fly, once you get the ability to ride on Basque Legion, hey, you know, now you can access even more areas in the Obsidian Field Lens. I'm hoping they do something like that, where the entire world has areas that are accessible and areas that are sort of soft locked off by movement capabilities but you're able to go to many areas and even though you might get bodied by a giant stone jenner i'm hoping that they allow you the option to do that and i don't know how this gym battle system is going to work maybe it'll scale to your levels you can go whatever uh order you want to go in uh, i don't know i'm hoping that whatever it is it's new it breathes life into the pokemon formula and for the love of god please don't go with the same generic story i will say historically the second generation per hardware so like you know um how do i say it gen 5 was the second generation on the ds gen 7 was the second generation on the 3ds and this is gonna be the second generation on the switch usually these games have a lot of content to them with a lot of stuff to do once you beat the game because they've had more time to cook as far as like hey we're familiar with like the switch hardware or the 3ds hardware or whatever and they recognize that this game is going to be around during a time where it's like the end of the switch life cycle where people are waiting on the next the next gen console and like it, they have to fill a lot of time in that way uh they have to like make this game last a while <laughs> uh we might get dlc again i'm hoping I, i'm kind of hoping we do but i'm hoping they go about it in the pokemon legends rcs route where it was just free minor updates uh i you know they might sell it again like they did with um the isle of armor and the crown tundra but we have no way of knowing um yeah i mean i guess another thing that i'd like is we see here that the battle taking place between the pikachu and the larvitar this isn't like a battle scene 
it seems to be that they do the same thing they do in Pokemon Legends Arceus, where you just do that battle right there. And I would really appreciate if that's exactly what it was. If they kept it how it was in Pokemon Legends Arceus, because I really appreciated the freedom of moving around the battle and getting to interact with it in that way. But what I will say is I really hope that they get rid of the strong and, uh, and agile style stuff, because it doesn't lend itself well to competitive Pokemon. I obviously I'm a competitive Pokemon YouTuber. I really enjoy, you know, going into stats, going into like the battle mechanics and uprooting the battle mechanics and adding something like strong and, and agile style uh, would sort of really change the way that battles go in a way that is deeply unfamiliar and hard to predict because there's so many things going on like oh my Greninja especially in doubles like oh my Greninja is going to go three times in a row because I used agile style water shuriken uh but then my chestnut goes because I used agile style wood hammer um and you use strong style flare blitz with your charizard so you're going to be going uh in between you know my Greninja's fourth move and my chestnut's second like something like that like it's it's going to be weird uh, and I think that's why they didn't include double, I guess, double trainer battles in in Pokemon Legends Arceus because it was just easier to deal with, I think. Uh, but yeah, I'm really hoping we keep, you know, player to player battles PvP. I'm certain that it's not going to go away because that's the main draw of Pokemon. And this is a main series game. There typically is like a thing that they get rid of there's there's usually like a me not a mechanic but like a fun feature that they get rid of that people aren't a fan of in generation six to seven they got rid of the player search system was a, which was a tragedy from generation seven to eight i guess it would be the national decks but i don't really care too much about that because i'm mostly like a battling guy i don't know what they would get rid of from generation eight to nine but for the love of god don't let it be the ranked battle system i really really don't want them to get rid of the ranked battle system like we we're fine without it technically, but I think that moving from great ball tier to uh, to like how do I say it to uh, from great ball tier to like master ball tier or whatever is just like a really fun experience that keeps people hooked and wanting to learn how to play better. If we go to like a, an elo system like this with like no labels, I think it's harder for players to get motivated to want to play because like you know you start out at like. I don't know, like 1100 or whatever, or 1500 on like Pokemon official ladders. And then you try to work your way at people like, oh yeah, I'm 1501, but there isn't really like a number assigned to that. Like, hey, I'm 150th in the world or something. Like, I think that just having that as motivation is really, really big. And I'd really appreciate if they kept that. I think my number one wish though, is that they fix the online system. So that way we have something similar to the player search system. Uh, I'm hoping that there's still some community thing in generation eight we had like raid battles and max raid adventures and that was fun to play with your friends that was really fun to do i don't know what the gimmick for this game is but i'm sure it's going to tie into whatever community based event you can do in the game um I, I i forget where it is but like in the japanese logos you always see like the symbol for the gimmick that they're going to introduce we saw mega stones in gen 6 we saw uh the z crystals in gen 7 in gen 8 there was a little dynamax symbol in this game, I, fr I don't want to pull it up because I hate going through Google Images, but uh, there's like a little star where like the E and the M meet in the Pokemon logo. No idea what that's going to mean. Uh, as far as balance goes, I think it's hard to get worse than Dynamax. So we're already taking a step in the right direction with Dynamax likely being removed. I really hope they don't keep it. But yeah, uh, these are just my initial thoughts. I'm really hoping that the starters have you know, solid abilities. I'm hoping that this game has a lot of content in it. And I'm honestly hopeful. There's a very good track record for the second generation per console. And I think that's going to probably be good. Even if it didn't have as much time to cook as we would all hope for, you know, generation eight being announced or generation nine being announced three years after generation eight is not a break from formula. We always get three years and then a new game. Uh, I think a lot of people are concerned because Pokemon Legends Arceus and BDSP just released like, and they're already announcing generation nine uh but you have to keep in mind that there are multiple teams working in parallel on these things and yeah also his suey forms are in this game which means look look it, it, i can dream i really really want to use Basky legion and vgc i really really want to use Basky legion man like this thing's gonna go crazy anyways uh that's just my initial thoughts on this it was a little bit rambly i'm sure but i hope you guys enjoyed leave a like if you did 
be sure to check out my Twitch channel. I go live at 5.30 CST tonight, and I'm going to be streaming some ranked on Pokemon Sword and Shield. So yeah, have a nice night, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.